Hello guys, Survival Tech Nord here. One thing that the survival and ham radio communities have in common is the infinite amount of companies that are willing to take advantage of us as consumers. Well today we have two different products here which are seemingly alike. We're going to take them apart, show you what they're all about, and show you that although they look the same on the outside, they are vastly different on the inside. So stick with me. And let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. How do we tell the difference between two different products? Do we rely on the marketing from manufacturers? Do we trust the reviews of channels on YouTube who show us these products and how they work? At the end of the day, it's all about credibility. Credibility from the manufacturer, credibility from the reviewer, and credibility from the other people who are telling you about this product. Let's take a look at the specs. The Chameleon P-Loop covers the 40 through 10 meter amateur bands. Its power rating is 25 watts on SSB or 10 watts on CW. Its weight is 1,550 grams or 3.4 pounds. The radiator is made of LMR400 while the Faraday loop is made from solid aluminium. In contrast, the Alpha has 40 through 10 meter coverage, has a power rating said to be 30 watts BEP with no specs for CW or data. Its weight is 2,300 grams or 5.7 pounds. Uh, radiator is made from LMR400 and the Faraday loop is also LMR400. Based solely on the specs, we would conclude that these antennas are relatively the same. Let's take a closer look. Let's start with the Alpha this time. It takes a lot of getting used to, but the Alpha's tuning mechanism is extremely sensitive. This is because the Alpha lacks a speed reduction gear to smooth out the tuning mechanism. It's not so bad once you get used to it, but I would prefer to see the speed reduction gear included with this loop. Another aspect of tuning with the Alpha is moving your hand to and from the tuning dial. This does affect SWR on the radio, as you can see on the radio's meter. I believe there's two reasons for this. Firstly, the tuning dial is on top of the tuning box in the field of the loop. Secondly, there is either very little or no insulation at all between the capacitor and the tuning dial. Now this is kind of a bummer because Alpha says specifically in its marketing literature that the capacitor is completely isolated from the user. When looking inside we can see that there's actually no speed reduction gear. What we are given to aid in SWR indication is a neon light. Unfortunately that neon light doesn't work below 5 watts. So I would much rather have preferred the speed reduction gear rather than an idiot light which doesn't work. So we already understand very high Q magnetic loop antennas have very narrow bandwidth. That's why they're sensitive in tuning. But this is also why Chameleon has included the 61 reduction gear in the P-loop. This is also the first of many noticeable differences in quality between the P-loop and the alpha coaxial loop. With the P-Loop, the user is able to interact with the tuning knob or tuning case in any way without affecting the SWR on the radio. This also removes any need to guesstimate in the tuning process. Finally, thanks to that speed reduction gear, tuning the P-Loop is as simple as tuning a magnetic loop could be. When a salesman tells you that the only difference between their product and a competing product is the price, you should probably just turn and run in the opposite direction. We've already seen the omission of the speed reduction gear from the alpha coaxial loop. We can see the garden variety of stranded wire used rather than solid copper core. We can see crimped connections where crimping and soldering combined is usually preferred. 
we can see that no lock washers were used to secure the bolts to the case. And we can see the poor craftsmanship and lack of any attention to detail when putting this product together. The Chameleon P-Loop is the polar opposite from the Alpha Coaxial Loop. The very first thing you notice when you open the case of the P-Loop is the 6 to 1 speed reducer there. You'll definitely notice the use of lock washers and locking nylon nuts. You'll notice the crimped and soldered connections and the use of high quality wire inside the case. Finally, you'll find the craftsmanship and attention to detail usually reserved for Marine Corps barracks after field day. So a lot of you are going to ask, why should I care? I mean, what's the big deal and why to bring up old wounds? Hardly a week goes by that I don't receive a message on my YouTube channel from someone who's been cheated or deceived or misled by the marketing that Alpha uses to sell its products. Well, let's go through some of that colorful marketing. The Alpha Coaxial Loop has a built-in SWR indicator. This is absolutely true, however, it doesn't work below 5 watts and you can't see it when using it outside during the day. The Alpha Coaxial Loop includes a tripod. Deceptive. The tripod is the supporting structure for the loop you couldn't not deliver it. Variable air capacitor mounted on an insulator. Deceptive. Here's the inside of the Chameleon P-Loop. That looks like a capacitor and, wait for it, it's mounted to an insulator. The Alpha Coaxial Loop has a double-walled high-voltage enclosure removing hand capacitance from tuning. Absolutely deceptive. The simple demonstration hears you that this is completely deceptive. Coaxial outer loop with foil shield. More marketing brouhaha. All mag loops using LMR 400 for an outer loop have the foil shield. The BNC connector is the default connector blah blah blah. This isn't deceptive, it's just marketing, designed to add unique selling points to the literature of the product. It's also no longer valid since Alpha moved over to the rigid Faraday loops for their coaxial series. Now there's one more that I want to share and I'll leave it at that. It's the IP54 rating of the enclosure of their coaxial loop series. Yes, the enclosures are IP54 rated. At least they were before the tuning screw hole was drilled into the box. So there's two problems with this IP54 protection. No ingress protection has been done after drilling the holes in the enclosure. And water pools at the top of the enclosure and drains into the tuning dial. At the end of the day, it's all about honesty and transparency. What you're looking at here is the manufacturing process at Chameleon Antennas. You've all watched the channel enough to know that I use a lot of gear from Chameleon. Some of it I've paid for, and some of it has been sent for review. And if you've been around the channel long enough, you've even seen me from time to time blasting Chameleon about some product. So the difference is, when I give negative feedback to Chameleon about a product, they give feedback to me or ask feedback from me about how they can improve that product. It's a partnership for their product development. It's a partnership between a radio operator who wants to buy something once and use it for life, and a company who wants to do everything it can to ensure that radio operator can do that. At the end of the day, I want my subscribers and followers to demand a few things. Transparency. 
so that I can understand why I should invest in your product. I want you to skip the marketing brouhaha and show me the technical details to prove what you're saying. I want to see full HD images of products on your website. I'll just skip the rest of it, guys, and go straight to the end. It wouldn't be fair to Alpha if I didn't tell you that they actually have made improvements to their antennas. Unfortunately, they haven't stopped the marketing nonsense or provided additional technical details about their products. So final thoughts, honestly, if you can't build it yourself or you don't want to build it yourself, buy it from Chameleon. This was not a sponsored video. All right, guys, don't forget to like us on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, Facebook, and of course, survivaltechnology.net. And if you think I deserve it, please give me a thumbs up and share this video with someone who might enjoy it. All right, guys, rock and roll. Thanks for watching. Ciao.